Hi everyone and welcome to the Cornerstone Worship Service. We are doing this service from our friends and supporters at uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church. They've come to visit us in the prison at Cornerstone and so now we're having this service from, uh, from here and recording it there. Uh, we're glad that we are able to, to worship with you in this way and we hope that you can enjoy this as well and let others know and that everyone can share the gospel through this. Our call to worship is from Psalm 67 verses 1 through 7 and we read these words, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on the earth. Your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear, fear him. And as uh, Corey and his special guests make their way up to the front, receive God's greeting. Congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the, his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Good morning, and um, we're so glad to have a chance to worship with you today. And just uh, wherever you find yourself at this moment, watching this broadcast, if you would just join in in spirit and even sing along if you're able to. And we'll do some familiar songs, but also some new ones. But just hope that you sense God's presence. Let's begin with Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all the alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? On the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all the alarms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh God. Secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. 
We want to do a song for you now that is a new one. This was recommended to me by Don from church. This is one of his favorites. It's called the Old Church Choir. We'll be doing God's Guide for Holy Living from Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 20. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Be among you, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such, as a pers such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of, the, of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention
what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs of spe- from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our call to confession comes from Psalm 37, 27 through 31. Turn away from evil and do good. So shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. For our prayer of confession, will you please bow your heads. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another that we have sinned against you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not fully loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not always had in us the mind of Christ. You alone know how often we have grieved you by what wasting your gifts by wandering from your ways. Forgive us, we pray you, most merciful Father, and free us from our sin. Renew in us the grace and strength of your Holy Spirit. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from Psalm 66. Come and hear, all you who fear God. And I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not turned away from my prayer, nor his mercy from me. We're going to do a song of assurance um, that's... Uh, A little bit of a different uh, choice in this setting, but I find as I'm praying and confessing to God these days, a lot of times I'm I'm confessing that it's difficult to just be um, at peace and satisfied in the situation in which we find ourselves and not long for other things and constantly think about the future and things like that, but to be in the present. um, And so we want to do a song which um, really speaks to that in different ways, Um, And I know that all of you men are um, going through really a struggle, not being able to have visitors and things like that, and probably do all the activities you're used to, but um, can you find peace uh, just in that that place where he has you at this moment? And can we all find that? This is called You Want What You Can't Have. People want a house on the top of the hill. Some people want people to pay all their bills. Some people want to move on. Some people want to go back in time. Some people buy everything they want. Other people don't have a dime. You want what you can't have since the Garden of Eden. It's been like that, you can't tear down the trees or pull all the weeds. You want what you can't have. Some people wear their heart on the sleeve. Some people have a heart of stone. 
People are the life of the party Others want to be left alone Some people want to drink Some people want to smoke Some people stay up all night Praying for a child of their own You want what you can't have Since the Garden of Eden It's been like that You can't tear down the tree Pull all the weeds Spend your life looking for the greener grass You want what you can't have Even fortune tellers Can't go back and wake the dead Or change what you said You want what you can't have You want what you can't have We want the spark But we don't want the burn We want the love But we don't What you can't have since the Garden of Eden It's been like that, you can't tear down the tree Or pull all the weeds Spend your life looking for the green and grass You want what you can't have Even fortune tellers can't go back Can't wait to dead or change what you said You want what you can't have You want what you can't have Oh, we all want what we can't have what you can't have. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in awe of him who alone does great wonders for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the water, his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever who remembers us in our lowly estate, for his mercy endures forever. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. We want to lift up the doctors and nurses and the medical staff as they uh, deal with the people that are with the COVID-19 disease and give them uh, peace and grant them uh, the understanding of how to deal with these people and not succumb to the fear. We also ask you to be with the leaders of our country and give them guidance as they decide how to deal with the economic issues as well as the med medical issues and that there are enough supplies to deal with everything. We also ask you to be with the people that are out of work, that are, grant them peace and that you will take care of them and that everything will be all right. And pray for the inmates in the penitentiary as they deal with the, the loneliness of not being able to see people on the outside and the change in life, not being able to worship you, be with them and help them to support each other in this time and uh, to grow closer to you and be in prayer as well. And pray for the homeless too as they deal with this. There could be more people like that with people being out of work and not being able to pay their bills. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of dawn the nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted, 
The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We confess that God is our refuge, but we are prone to wander from God, from the God we love. But we have to be still and calm our fears and calm the fears of the people that are panicking because of the COVID-19 virus and know that God is in control. All this we ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our song of preparation is um, Where Does My Help Come From, which is the text that um, Doug will be preaching on as well. And it's really just um, the scripture sets in music, and hopefully this will set the tone for the message that Doug um, is bringing um, from the Lord today. And we'll sing it again at the end, and you can take this melody with you uh, throughout the week. As Corey said, our scripture for this today comes for us from Psalm 121. Hear the word of the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And that's the word of the Lord. Our scripture text for this morning, or for today, I've decided to change up from the normal Lenten messages that we were having on the, on the questions people asked of Jesus. And God laid Psalm 121 on my heart. Where does my help come from? Now, during the 1800s, there was a missionary from Scotland by the name of, of David Livingstone. During his lifetime and during his missionary travels, he was credited with exploring the uncharted interior of Africa. 
On the morning he left for Africa, he gathered his family around him in the town of Blantyre, Scotland, and read Psalm 121. He believed this psalm to be a proper source of strength, comfort, and reassurance, both for himself and also for his family, as they prepared for the long, difficult, and arduous journey that lay ahead for them. Later, Livingstone's mother-in-law would write in a letter that Psalm 121 would constantly be before her as she prayed for her son-in-law, Livingstone, and her family. And I quote, Unceasing prayer is made for you. When I think of you, my heart will go upwards. Keep him as the apple of thine eye. Hold him in the hollow of thine hand. These are the cries of my heart. In the, unquote, in the years that followed, the Lord heard those prayers and petitions and, and filled Livingstone with the divine power necessary to fulfill the many challenges and endure all the hardships that he encountered. It said that no matter how great the demands were, the all-sufficient power of God was able to see his servant safely through this demanding mission. So in our world for today, our world today, particularly the particular challenges that we're facing, we need God's power not only to live a Christian life, but also to be a light in the dark world around us. One of the greatest challenges we face as we go through our Christian walk is to live in God's strength and not in our own strength. That's the lesson of this psalm. A testimony from the psalmist to live in the reliance of God's strength. The psalm breaks down very easily into four distinct parts. The first, God is my strength, would be verses 1 and 2. And then secondly, God is my support, verses 3 and 4. Thirdly, God is my shade, verses 5 and 6. And lastly, God is my Savior, verses 7 and 8. So the first part, God is my strength. In Psalm 121, is known as being one of the psalm of ascents, a psalm that the Israelites would recite as, as they made their way toward the city of Jerusalem, which was located on a high hill, and toward the temple, which is on the highest point in the city of Jerusalem. The hills or the mountains that the psalmist refers to in this psalm could be that hill, or it could be the other prominent mountains in Israel such as Mount Sinai or Mount Carmel, where Yahweh, their God, made his presence known to his people. Now, if you've ever had the opportunity to go west toward the Rocky Mountains, you can probably remember the excitement of being able to see the mountains in the distant horizon for the first time. The clear blue skies above and the mountains reaching up from the ground into the skies can be breathtaking. For us, lifting our eyes to the heavens also suggests the otherworldliness of God. We are of the earth, and we need to look up, from he up to heaven. We as human beings have limited resources, and we're limited by our own human intellect. We cannot save ourselves from our own sinfulness, nor can we hope to obtain a place in heaven by our own worth or our own value. There's also, also there are some things that occur right around us that we're not able to, to understand or to comprehend. In contrast, we're told by society and by culture around us that we control our own destiny. We are the captains of our own fate. And yet, a simple virus, something so small that we cannot even see it, can bring each one of us and our country, the world essentially, to its knees and causes us to cry out for help. 
the psalmist gives his personal testimony when he tells us that my help comes from the Lord. He affirms that he needs help in all the dimensions of his life, his physical needs, his emotional needs, and his spiritual needs. He is not looking anywhere else for help. He knows the, the mountains can't help him, but the creator of the mountains can. The creator of all things, the very God who has the infinite power to make, to create, and to sustain all things in heaven and on earth alone possesses the ability to help him, to help us today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. The second part of the psalm, God is my support. The psalmist begins more of a personal reflection about the about God who is his help. The psalmist uses the Hebrew word shamar six times in the psalm. Shamar can be translated as watches over or keeps. In other words, the psalmist testifies that God watches over us as a garden, a guardian, excuse me. When we read the words, he will not let your foot slip, we don't think much of it. However, during the Bible days, they were not, there were not paved walking paths or roads for people to travel on. People followed animal trails or just made their way overland from point A to point B. If someone was traveling by themselves and they slipped and fell and turned an ankle or broke a leg, could very easily become fatal. You couldn't get out your cell phone, call an ambulance, and an injured man, an injured person lying on the ground was easy prey for a hungry wild animal. This same sovereign and divine protection is continual. It doesn't end at daybreak or take coffee break or holidays off. This protection with, from God is with us 24-7, 365. God doesn't sleep or slumber or even wane in his attention to us. We can pray to him at midnight or at noon and he hears us and he's fully awake. He fully comprehends our prayer. And that same Lord watches over will always watch over and protect his chosen people. He knows what's going on in each one of our lives at any moment. The next part. God is my shade. In, in biblical Palestine or Israel, the danger of sunstroke was real. As the, the men and the women would work, the sun would drain away their strength little by little as they made their way through the day. But shade, however, provides comfort from the oppressive sun and is welcome relief for those who are forced to be out in the hot sun. For the psalmist, God provides a shade, and therefore, to be by God is to be protected. God stands between us and, and the dangerous ultraviolet lights of the sun. God provides that welcome shade. And if you think about it, shade is usually right next to its source. To be in God's shade means that we are right next to God. Now, if you have ever tried walking through a darkened house at night, it can be especially challenging. Perhaps while making your way through a pitch black home, some Legos managed to embed themselves in between your toes or the furniture moved just enough to 
just enough from its original position to reach out and pull your little toe out to an impossible angle. And if you really want to increase the difficulty factor of this challenge, walk through that same darkened house over those Legos with those moved furnitures while carrying a sleeping baby. Or if you're outside during a power outage and the world around you becomes as dark as the bottom of a coal mine. It can be hard to find your way even with the headlights of a car. For the psalmist in biblical Palestine, even though the sun wasn't shining at night, it still wasn't safe to venture out. There were no street lamps to provide light, nor was there a flashlight to guide your path. When God is watching over you, whether it's day or night, the sun nor the moon can harm you. God's protection is constant and continuous. In the last part of the psalm, God is my Savior. For most of us, walking from, from point A to point B is not much of a challenge. Most of us can just get up and move to the next destination. It doesn't require a lot of planning or forethought. This is not the case in biblical Israel, especially for those who are making their way to Jerusalem to worship in the temple. Thieves and robbers would hide along the roads and, and prey upon the travels, travelers, and even wild animals were known to attack an unsuspecting traveler. The psalmist declares that the Lord will protect them from all harm, both physical harm, but also from